scientists warn, Yellowstone supervolcano warning, catastrophic eruption would destroy all life on Earth. Yellowstone's supervolcano could have enough magma to destroy life on Earth in a matter of decades. This is what scientists and researchers are warning yet again. New research shows pressure beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano could build much quicker than they previously thought. And this type of an eruption could make Earth uninhabitable. Research was presented recently by the Arizona State University in a meeting in Oregon. And it goes against the previous findings, uh, which that could take, in which that could take thousands of years to build up. So their previous findings said, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it now. It could be in the next thousand years that this happens. However, the, the recent, the most recent findings state that that's not so, that it could be imminent. Scientists say it could happen within tens of years. This is after a study analyzing crystals in volcanic rocks found in the area showed that that would be the case. As the crystals grew, they were increasingly prone to being influenced by their surroundings, such as pressure, heat, and water crystal uh, water content. After the eruption, before the eruption, the researchers found that there was an extremely fast buildup in pressure and temperature surrounding these crystals, and this showed that pressure beneath the surface of the powerful supervolcano built very rapidly. The lead researcher was Hannah Shamlo. She's at the Arizona State University, as she told New York Times, quote, it's shocking how little time is required to take a volcanic system from being quiet and sitting there to the edge of an eruption, end quote. Her colleagues, Chrissy Hill said, we expect that there might be processes happening over thousands of years preceding the eruption, end quote. And she added, instead, the outer rims of the crystals reveal a clear uptick in temperature and a change in composition that occurred on a rapid time scale. And that would mean that the super eruption transpired only decades after an injection of fresh magma beneath the super volcano. With her research, which shows that a buildup could occur very easily within a lifetime, Scientists now hope that they will be able to spot other warning signs. Mrs. Till added, it's, all, it's one thing to think that this slow, gradual buildup is another thing to think about how you mobile 1,000 cubic kilometers of magma in a decade. However, they stated that chances of an eruption do remain small, but there could be much less of a warning if Yellowstone were to blow. Very recently, the volcano in Wyoming, the supervolcano of uh, Yellowstone, has experienced a near record earthquake swarm beneath the surface, prompting fears that this could mean that it's about to blow. The usual peaceful volcano has now experienced almost 3,000 earthquakes since June 12th. And in actuality, there's 2,750 earthquakes which could indicate that it is ready to burst back into life. This is the second most active swarm of quakes since record keeping began for the Yellowstone supervolcano. So that's not good. However, US Geological Survey, the USGS, Mike Poland says, the swarm is likely nothing to worry about, but it will help experts learn more about the powerful supervolcano. He told Newsweek, this is the sort of work that will happen in the months to come as we gather up all of the available data and start crunching numbers. The Yellowstone Caldera supervolcano, the last time they erupt erupted was about 70,000 years ago. If this supervolcano were to erupt, it would kill an estimated 87,000 people immediately and make two thirds of the United States immediately, immediately uninhabitable. Two thirds of the US. The large spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out the sunlight and directly affect beneath it, 
creating a nuclear winter. The massive eruption could be staggering, 6,000 times as powerful as the one from Washington's Mount St. Helen in 1980 that killed 57 people and deposited ash in 11 different states and five Canadian provinces. Canada only has 10 provinces, so that's half of Canada and 11 states. If the volcano explodes, a climate shift could ensue as the volcano would spew massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, which can form a sulfur aerosol that reflects and absorbs light, sunlight, of course. And another thing that's not mentioned yet in this article, but from one of my previous posts, we did report the fact that in 2014, when again at that point, the researcher said that Yellowstone was about to blow and that the eruption was imminent, the United States went into an agreement with four or five, I can't remember, I think it was well, let's be conservative, four separate foreign countries of the Southern Hemisphere. And they paid tens of billions of dollars for a 10-year contract starting 2014, ending 2024, for the acceptance of evacuees because of the Yellowstone supervolcano eruption. Millions of evacuees would be displaced from the United States, from the Northern Hemisphere altogether, and be forced, well, God willing, they at least they, they, they are alive, they'll be uh, moved, relocated to foreign countries in the Southern Hemisphere, in the South, where they believe that the ash and the uh, catastrophic gases and lava uh, ballistically spewing out will not affect the Southern Hemisphere. So this is on Express UK and uh, it seems that every time new research is done on Yellowstone they find bigger magma chambers, they find um, carbon lakes, lakes of carbon underneath the magma chambers and uh, the fact that instead of the volcanic lava eruption it even it could even be uh, water geyser, huge water geysers erupting, which is even worse than a lava eruption from what the previous post I gave you tells us. So this is not good news. Uh, now there are some of our people here that sub and watch my videos that live in that area. I don't know what they could do to perhaps move out and find a place to live that's as far away as possible from Yellowstone. What can I say? This is not good news. I'll leave a link below for you. This is on Express UK. And uh, one thing that we have to also say here, the major cities that will be immediately affected in the event of an eruption are these here. Boise, Idaho, Billings, Montana, Salt Lake City, Utah, Denver, Colorado, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Rapid City, and, and uh, the Dakotas. And of course, we see it stretching all the way down towards Arizona, all the way up towards uh, Saskatchewan and uh, Alberta, and a little bit of British Columbia. And this is just being conservative. And this would take in of course, tens of millions of Americans. And this is just from the beginning. After that, weeks later, it'll stretch throughout two thirds of the United States. An immediate volcanic winter. And from what the uh, evacuation agreement tells us, they believe that it will affect immediately the whole of the Northern Hemisphere, the, the whole planet. And that's why they had tens of billions up to 2014 paid, they've already paid for this, in order to evacuate Americans to four foreign countries of the Southern Hemisphere. Now, who is on that list? Who will be evacuated? Who knows? Perhaps the ones that have been told they will be evacuated, have already been informed, 
and they have tickets just in case you get a special telephone call <laughs> to appear somewhere immediately to be airlifted somewhere else. Uh, that's not, um, it's a reality. What can, what can we say? It's a reality. Not everyone could be uh, airlifted, but there are those special people that will be airlifted. Now this agreement finishes in the year 2024 and they will have to re-enter an agreement right after that because this agreement was only for 10 years. And every 10 years, they have to go into uh, a new agreement. They even uh, asked South Africa to accept. South Africa declined. They said, if we have that many millions of whites entering South Africa, that means we're going to have an apartheid system again. We're going to run into the same problems we had uh, before. And uh, they decided not to accept any um, Americans because of the fact that 60% of Americans are Caucasian anyway. And they figure if, we, if you uh, bring in uh, a huge amount of people, 60% of which are Caucasians, you're going to affect the makeup of our uh, populace. And they, that's why they refused having Americans accepted uh, to be relocated in South Africa. That's from what I remember. So this is real. And the scientists are now saying that the eruption is probably closer than we think. And uh, we'll keep updates coming as they come into us. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.